land, so incredibly vast and diverse, so foreign and mysterious. Over 1.3 billion people live in the Middle Kingdom, the literal translation of the Chinese name of the People's Republic of China. Asian and Western influences merge together in China, modern with traditional. Our journey takes us from the realm of the panda bear to a spectacular open air performance on the Lijiang River. China is about as large as the United States. The provinces of Hunan, Guilin, Guizhou, and Sichuan in the southwestern part of the country alone are already the size of Germany. The Chinese city of Macau, a former Portuguese colony, enjoys a special status, as does Hong Kong. The first lighthouse on the Chinese coast was erected on the highest point of the peninsula. In contrast to Hong Kong, gambling is allowed in Macau. That makes the city the Las Vegas of Asia. When the Portuguese landed in Macau in 1516, it was a small fishing village on the southern shore of the Pearl River Delta. Today, half a million people live there. The life expectancy of the inhabitants is amazing. 84.4 years, that is the second highest in the world. Macau's historical old city was declared to be a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site. The Portuguese influence is unmistakable. Jorge Alvarez is credited as being the first Portuguese seaman to place foot on Chinese soil. The so-called padrão is the symbol of the claiming of the land. In Macau, the heritage of two cultures merge. In the beginning, the Portuguese were under Chinese rule. Then the Europeans took over the political rudder and didn't give power back to the mother country until 1999. The temple honoring Amma, the goddess of mariners, existed even before the city was founded. The Portuguese adopted the name Amma, which gradually evolved into Macau. Every morning just after sunrise, the flower boats sail into the harbor. Every day, traders come here to pick up several tons of cut flowers in order to sell them on the markets in the inner city. The Chinese influence dominates the narrow alleys. The smell of exotic spices permeates the air. Life plays itself out on the streets. The shops offer local wares. Many Chinese men still believe in the aphrodisiac effect of shark fin. In addition, the popular shark fin soup is a must-have item on the menu of every local eatery. Both of these facts have resulted in more than 70 types of sharks landing on the list of endangered species. It is obviously not easy to do without this expensive delicacy. Many people could not even imagine a wedding without shark fin. Rice and noodles, on the other hand, are everyday staples. 
Pasta is made according to ancient family tradition in the Ding Hong Ki noodle house. Many hold to the opinion that Marco Polo brought noodles back to Italy from China. In fact, noodle dishes have been around in Europe since the time of ancient Greece. The art of making noodles probably developed in several places independent of one another. Connoisseurs differentiate the quality of pasta according to the ingredients used and the way it is made. Teflon-coated machines give the noodles a smooth surface, while older bronze or brass models result in a more rough texture, giving the sauce a better surface to adhere to. Chinese egg noodles are closely related to Italian spaghetti, the originals. Because of their enormous length, they are folded together before packaging. After being separated and air-dried, the noodles are ready to be sold. Ingredients such as spinach can be added to the mix to give the pasta some color. In part because they can be kept for so long without spoiling, noodles became an important food staple. Noodle factories achieve this durability by drying the pasta or briefly deep frying the commodity. Wheat flour, semolina, rice flour or mung bean starch, those are the most important ingredients. Thirty thousand types of plants are indigenous to China. That puts the Middle Kingdom in place three after Malaysia and Brazil. Many of those plants are used in traditional Chinese medicine. In addition, pharmacists also use an abundance of substances derived from animals. Apothecaries use the dried delicacies to prepare their prescriptions. Most often, the mixtures must be ingested in the form of a tea or broth in dosages precisely defined to meet the patient's needs. In times past, all a Chinese doctor needed to live on was provided for by the people he served. If the baker became ill, the doctor had no bread. So the medical expert was rather a maintainer of good health than a healer of the sick. The pharmacy looks like a wild witch's kitchen where one can find anything. Dried seahorses, various mushrooms, and yes, even shark's teeth. Today, even a Chinese doctor is paid with money. The holistic approach to the health of body and spirit, however, continues in today's traditional medicine, and it is being adopted in ever greater measure in the West as well. The pharmacist follows the doctor's instructions carefully and without any sign of hectic. Animal horns or antlers are often used. For us, the use of dried penises and testicles takes some getting used to. They come mostly from small types of deer. In Macau's tropical climate, all the plants that only survive in greenhouses at our latitude grow naturally in the city park. Surrounded by bamboo grass, a woman dances the famous fan dance. The music to the dance plays only in her head. The fan dance is very popular and is part of the repertoire of every dancer.
This school of movement, Tai Chi, is even more popular. Tai Chi means the merging of great opposites. It is much more a philosophy than a sport. It is all about becoming one, about the harmony between yin and yang. Over the past few years, this sleepy little town at the mouth of the Pearl River has developed into one of Asia's boom towns. The largest Catholic graveyard in Macau, San Miguel Arcaño, used to be outside the city walls. In the meantime, it has been swallowed up by a sea of houses. Texts and decorations engraved on the gravestones are a mirror of the society. People from the most diverse cultural circles are laid to rest here. Not far from the cemetery is the Monteforte Fortress. It was built in 1616 and first served to defend St. Paul's Church from pirates and thieves. But after a short time, it took over the general defense of the whole city especially against invaders from the Netherlands. The fortress and the lighthouse stand as reminders of Macau's military past. About 800 kilometers inland, in the Hunan province, lies the Cheng Jiaqi National Forest Park. This is home to one of China's most fascinating landscapes. Bizarre, jagged rock spires tower heavenward. This national forest is often referred to as the Yellowstone National Park of Asia. Yang Xingfu is a park ranger. In his free time, the 39-year-old paints landscapes in the traditional Chinese style. Most of the scenes he paints can be found in the park. Ink painting first developed in Korea. From the 6th century on, it found expression in Japanese and Chinese calligraphy, the oriental art of aesthetic writing. In most examples, this artistic drawing technique portrays nature in a harmonious yet minimalistic form. The idyllic village of Feng Huang, or Phoenix City, is located in the western part of Hunan province. For the Chinese, the phoenix is a symbol of good fortune, a large bird with majestic, colorful plumage. Time seems to stand still in Feng Huang. It is a wonderful example of how Chinese villages used to look before the process of modernization began. Most of the houses are about 600 years old. The Tuojiang River intersects the town and gives it a unique charm. There is hardly a row of houses in China that is captured for posterity more often than Feng Wang's waterfront. There is a story behind the name Phoenix City. It is said that in ancient times, two of these mythical birds flew over this place and found it to be so beautiful that they never wanted to leave it again.
To this day, the river plays a very significant role in the day-to-day -day life of the inhabitants. It is still to be seen if and when washing machines and modern architecture take over in Feng Huang. At this point, however, neither time pressure nor stress stand in the way of a friendly game of mahjong. This inner courtyard belongs to one of the most wealthy citizens of the town. For generations, the men of the family served the emperor as generals or high government officials. Because the entire complex has been maintained in its original condition for the most part, it stands today as a kind of private museum. The ostentatious adornments testify to the family's social standing. As darkness falls, the reflection of the lanterns of the city dance in the waters of the Tuojang. And in the evenings, a special tradition is played out. Visitors, as well as locals, launch self-made paper lanterns to float down the river. Some evenings, hundreds of paper water lily leaves holding candles dance upon the waters. Many believe that with every candle that you put in the water, you will be granted one wish. The Miao people live in Feng Wang. This girl is wearing the Miao traditional dress and welcoming travelers with her song. The ethnic roots of the Miao go back probably 4,000 years. But even with a population of about 9 million, the people group is still considered a minority in China. Welcome to our city, sings the girl. Even if we belong to different people groups, we are still all brothers and sisters. The ancestors of today's Miao were driven ever further to the south and into the mountain regions by the fast-growing Han Chinese population. Between the 17th and the 20th centuries, there were several Miao uprisings. Only with the founding of the People's Republic of China did they gain equal standing in Chinese society. To keep the troublesome minority in check, the Han Chinese built a wall. The Southern Wall, which has nothing to do with the Great Wall, runs along the border between Hunan and Guizhou. There were supposedly between four and 5,000 soldiers stationed along this border to defend against the Miao people.
Traveling inland from Feng Wang takes us to De Hung, which literally translated means the beautiful valley. Also here, the population is predominantly Miao Chinese. Nothing much has changed over the past years in De Hung either. The Miao and the Tujia have been able to preserve their cultural characteristics. They live simple lives embedded in a romantic landscape. In Long Ju Shan's family, one tradition has a very special meaning. On festive days, the girls are allowed to wear their grandmother's silver jewelry. For the Miao, silver serves as more than just decoration. It is given as gifts for every occasion and symbolizes the wealth of the family. A woman from a well-to-do home would have silver jewelry weighing about 15 kilograms. <laughs> Ju Shun is a very gifted dancer and drummer. She has been crowned Queen of the Miao Drums three times already. For thousands of years, this people group has had a kind of mystical relationship to the drums. For them, they symbolize the taut skin of a pregnant woman's stomach. Through the pounding of the drums, they celebrate the propagation and preservation of their people. The girls practice at least once a day, and they regularly play in traditional costume, regardless of whether visitors are watching or not. After her performance, Long Ju Shun makes preparations for a technique which is cherished and cultivated in Hunan. Silk embroidery. An artist delivers an ink painting as a pattern for a detailed embroidery piece. The silkworm has been known in China since about 3,000 years before Christ. International trade in Chinese silk began right at the beginning of recorded history. Creating a minutely small embroidered pattern, sometimes requiring that a silk thread be divided into as many as 70 individual threads, takes several months, if not years. Silk's own shine gives the works a photorealistic look. It seems almost as if the animals have real fur. In 1982, a master from Hunan embroidered a drinking tiger. The work of art was entered into the list of Chinese national treasures. Guilin lies to the southwest of Hunan, the city of the forest of the sweet osmanthus flower. The town is nestled in an impressive landscape of hills and karst mountains. The scenery can be best appreciated from the air.
Captain Wu knows the prevailing air currents. They vary according to altitude, allowing Wu to determine the basic direction of flight. The basket glides sedately through narrow gorges, past steep rocky mountain cliffs, and over artistically laid out terraced fields. Finally, the town of Guilin, small by Chinese standards, appears on the west bank of the Lijiang River. A belt of mountains protects the 1.3 million inhabitants like a natural fortress. The rock formations spark the imagination. In the Park of Seven Stars stands a formation called a camel with two humps. A drinking elephant stands at the estuary of the Yangcheng into the Lijiang. The so-called Elephant Trunk Mountain is the emblem of Guilin. Just a few kilometers outside the city, we see additional examples of a variety of the karst mountain rock. Every day, an armada of tour boats chugs up and down the Lijiang. The most beautiful stretch of the more than 400 kilometer long river begins just beyond the city. Most of the tourists come from China itself. In China, the karst mountains around Guilin are the epitome of a beautiful landscape. Rock with a high calcium content, or limestone, is the prerequisite for these formations. Over time, the forces of water, carbonic acid, wind and weather carve out these amazing shapes. In this region, the Lijiang takes on a special meaning. The so-called Magic Canal provides a shipping lane to a tributary of the Yangtzekiang River. This canal was built already 300 years before the birth of Christ. It is an engineering and construction masterpiece. After all, it tames two rivers which flow in opposite directions. Nothing similar was achieved in Europe until the 13th century. Limestone spires are the most common formations found in the region surrounding Guilin. They often occur in proximity to rivers with abundant water flow. Deeper into the mountains, numerous caves lie hidden. Washed out calcium solidifies here in the form of stalactites and stalagmites. The reed pipe cave in the Mountain of Lights is Guilin's largest cave. 1,000 people fit into one of its rooms, a room called the Crystal Palace of the Dragon King. A 500 meter long trail takes visitors deep into the heart of the mountain. At the end of the trail, a magical view awaits. The reflection in the underground lake looks like a panorama of the area around Guilin in miniature. For many inhabitants, the Lijiang provides their only livelihood. For these cormorants, it is their workplace. Their wings have been clipped so that they can't fly away, and a thin line collars their necks. 
Each evening, their owners take the birds out on the river and let them swim. The cormorants hunt fish, but they are not allowed to keep their prey. Their owners take the fish out of their beaks before they even have a chance to swallow them. The knowledge of cormorant fishing and how the animals are bred is a well-protected secret passed down from father to son. Only a few remain who have mastered the hand breeding and training of the animals. It takes about eight months of intensive work before a cormorant is able to carry out its task dependably. This old man is able to provide for his family with his knowledge. In many places, however, this method of fishing is no longer of any economic significance. The stage performance is called Liu, the third sister. It can be seen in Yangshu on the shore of the Lijiang. During the day, the approximately 600 performers pursue their normal occupations as craftsmen, laborers, fishermen, and farmers. In the evenings, they play, sing, and dance on the enormous open air stage. The imaginative spectacle was staged by Zhang Yimou, the same director responsible for the opening ceremony of the 2008 Olympic Games in Peking. The story is about Liu Xinjie, the third sister. She could sing about anything, whether it was an object, a person, an animal, or a feeling. Liu Xinjie would come up with a text and compose a song. It is said that her singing was so beautiful that it even brought the dead back to life. local warlord kidnaps Liu Xinjie in order to take her as his mistress, but her friends and her fiancé come to her rescue. Another 1,000 kilometers inland takes us to Sichuan, the province of the Four Rivers. Here, too, an ancient, elaborate system of dams changed the region. Now, the Minjiang, the tributary of the large Yangtze River with the greatest water flow, supplies the plains of Sichuan with water. 2,300 years ago, a steward of the first Chinese empire named Li Bing had bamboo baskets filled with rocks sunk into the middle of the river. This created an artificial island, which split the river's flow into two streams. He continued having this done for decades until a network of canals was created. This changed Sichuan's Red Basin into one of the most fruitful regions of China. A temple built in honor of Li Bing and his son is right close by. 
For the Chinese, a religion is a system of teaching among many others. They often belong to several different religious communities. A local saying illustrates this pragmatic mindset. A Chinese is a Confucian when he is doing well, a Taoist when he is doing poorly, and a Buddhist when facing death. The Crane Tea House is one of the oldest and most renowned in Sichuan's main city, Chengdu. It is a favorite meeting place for locals from all levels of society, as well as a popular destination for tourists. The most elegant tea culture is cultivated here. In-house masseurs offer additional relaxation. Many things happen in parallel in China. There is nothing to be said against enjoying a nice cup of tea and getting your ears cleaned at the same time. This technique is called diving in the deep sea. The tuning fork makes the cotton swab vibrate, thus doing a better cleaning job on the auditory canals. Chen De Hong is the top chef in a famous restaurant in Chengdu. The 32-year-old began his training already at the age of 12. Sichuan cuisine is renowned throughout the world. One reason for the wide variety of foods is the irrigation system, which provides for fruitful soil and rich harvests. The cuisine of this region is supposedly unique in that it combines all known hot spices into a single dish. The preference for hot spiced foods is documented in very ancient sources. That proves that it did not begin with the import of chili peppers from America. When combining dishes, the cooks also place high value on color, form, and aroma. Upriver from the city, two rivers flow into the Mingjiang. The wide current becomes unpredictable at this point, and terrible floods occur on a regular basis. A giant Buddha has been built here to help calm the waters. At 71 meters high, this monument is the largest stone Buddha in the world. Visitors who climb the 217 steps to sit at the feet of the Buddha and pray look like ants next to the enormous statue. An attraction that is at least as popular is Sichuan's panda breeding station. About 55 pandas live here, cared for around the clock. The goal is to save the giant panda from extinction. Among the bears, the panda is the most distinctly vegetarian. Its favorite food, tender bamboo shoots. The low nutritional value of this delicacy requires the animals to spend most of their day foraging and eating. To get to the soft heart of the plant, the pandas spend hours chewing through the hard bamboo rind. The comfortable communal impression is deceiving. In the wild, pandas are loners and only seek the company of others during mating season. Every day, thousands of visitors come to marvel at the baby-faced bears. The birth of a baby panda is a sensation in any zoo. The same is true at the Chengdu Research Base. Even though many pandas have been born here, and they have had a lot of experience with raising the young animals. The animal keeper distracts the mother with a bowl of treats and borrows her cub for a short time. That doesn't seem to bother the mama bear. Her little one is returned right after it's been weighed. C1 
Sichuan is the most densely populated province of China. The first musical plays originated from the songs of the local boat people, tea pickers, and rice field laborers. The musicals were the forerunners of the province's renowned traditional opera. At one time, only men were permitted to perform in the Sichuan opera. They were appropriately made up for the female roles. Today, the performers are mixed. Actors and actresses do their own makeup, and the public is permitted to watch them in the process. Romeo and Juliet in Chinese. The piece is a story about forbidden love between the daughter of a governor and the son of a general from feuding families. A temperamental mother-in-law also plays an important role. She tries to position herself between the two lovebirds. The performance has already begun on stage as the mask master pauses to say his prayers. It is a ritual he carries out before every performance. Mask changing is an ancient art form which was integrated into the Sichuan opera in the 18th century. A so-called mask master is trained by his father from childhood. Traditionally, the secret of the art of the quick change may only be passed down from one generation to the next. Mysterious China, with its immense size, its cultural diversity and ever-changing landscapes, is one of our world's last unexplored paradises.